well, this will be the flow of fluids in, in, in a more general sense, this the flow of fluids uh, of, of the actual fluid itself. So um, what we did last time was to uh, only consider fluid that was in porous media and we averaged out the uh, existence or the, the pore space and the, the interaction between the fluid and the pore space. Now we're going to look at the fluid itself uh, and, uh, and evaluate it. So I started out in just kind of a broad sense here um, with this uh, general definition of a fluid. I got this online and so it's a, yeah, well, one thing it's a liquid or a gas um, and has little resistance to external stress, although it certainly has some and that'll, that'll play an important role. And here's some um, interesting looking examples of, uh, of fluids uh, drawn mostly from nature, although I guess toothpaste isn't exactly natural. Oh, and there's a, there's a jet that's uh, kind of an interesting example. So um, here's what I want to do. Uh, we'll have the, uh, we'll I'll take a look at some examples just to give you an idea of the kind of topics that we're uh, interested in. And then we're going to need to look at some concepts uh, that we'll, we'll have to all agree on that um, we'll use to, to describe these processes. Um, and then we'll go into the, the analysis. Okay, so here's some examples. And this is kind of a transition from what we saw last week. Uh, we, can, uh, we can zoom in on the porous material and analyze the flow in the porous spaces itself. Uh, and so here's, a, here's a, a, an example of that where we've got some pore space and uh, w what we did last time was just considered uh, this whole block, but now if we would zoom in, we, we can analyze how the, the flow might go through these individual pore spaces. Uh, and here's some examples, here's some, some flow lines through the the pore spaces and there's here's some things that are getting deposited in the pore space. Um, so later on when we go to look at, at chemical reactions, um, this will be a, th this will be kind of a concept that we'll be able to come back to um, where we're we're able to treat porous media in an average continuum sense like we did last year last week um, or at a pore scale um, like we're going to do uh, this week. Okay, so you can think of pores as conduits, um, but if you do that, you can also think of a lot of other types of conduits, um, pipes, for example, um, and then there would be many other, other things that would be bigger than what you would consider as a pore, um, but would be a, um, a region where the water is flowing through this, uh, this region and you've got interactions with the walls uh, and uh, understanding that whole process uh, is something that you'd, you'd be interested in. Um, and so let's see, I got some other uh, some examples. This is a, a, a channel, so that's a, that's a form of a, of a conduit. Uh, here's, a, here's a large pore, this cave. Um, where we'd have, uh, have flowed through that thing. And from, uh, from biological applications, veins and arteries would be uh, conduits. And uh, yes, up here are some cool looking pictures of a drain in a dam. So this is, I don't know, that, that's, that's pretty cool. I guess that, I don't know if that's Hoover Dam, um, but some, some pretty nice jets coming out of, of conduits. Okay, so that'll be an example that we'll be interested in. How does the flow work through those kinds of things. But then we can, uh, I guess, really modify the geometry. Uh, and in a conduit, we're interested in, in more or less one-dimensional flow, although there will be plenty of applications where there will be three-dimensional components in, in a conduit. Um, but the applications I'm showing here really involve the circulation of fluids in in 3D, uh, in, um, a, a, in the, the pattern of flow is going to be uh, an important aspect to the way these processes work. So 
Uh, here's just a very simple example of flow in an aquarium, uh, but it kind of sets the stage. Uh, we could think of this as uh, we, can, we, can, we can enlarge this tank uh, from aquarium to some larger body of water. Um, I guess here are a couple of other versions of tanks, um, treatment plants, and this is a cross-section through another, uh, it's, a, it's a reactor, so from another type of, of treatment plant. And basically what's happening here is the water is circulating, forming this 3D pattern, and uh, often what's going to be of interest is that there'll be reactions taking place in that 3D circulating pattern, and we'll be interested in uh, what's happening with that circulation. Um, uh, this is a this is another example. This is a constructed wetland, um, and there's been a variety of research done. Uh, well, I, really on 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 all these systems in in the department, um, where we've got a, a three-dimensional flow uh, with reactions taking place. And and um, another example that's uh, I guess closer to home, perhaps literally, is uh, this one here. And this is kind of hard to see, but this is a simulation of the flow in a, in a room. So here in our room, um, there's, there's actually quite a complicated pattern of flow going on right now. Um, what happens is that all you guys are heat sources. And so there's, uh, there's convection uh, going on uh, above your head. And so there's, there's, there's air that rises up above your head and there's circulation cells around here. Um, and then the HVAC system also is going to have something to say about that. So there's air flowing around here in a, in a fairly complicated uh, 3D pattern um, that we might be interested in understanding uh, a little bit better. Um, now, these are some examples of, uh, of flows that are that are 3D, um, but what, what you do sometimes for uh, three-dimensional flows that are very thin, um, that, are, that are essentially thin layers, is you can, uh, you can do a simplification where you really are just treating the, the, the flow in a, in a thin layer. And um, what's important here is the thickness of the layer relative to its horizontal length. Um, and so it's, it's kind of a, a relative sense because the, the atmosphere and the oceans are uh, often thought of this way as, as thin layers. Um, and so uh, you, can, you can think of them as, this, uh, as the flow through a thin layer and that allows you to uh, simplify the analysis uh, somewhat. Okay, so those are some different uh, configurations. One of the things that we'll be interested in that we really didn't see in porous media flow uh, is the development of, of eddies and uh, in a process called flow separation. And so one, one way that you can see it uh, up here in this example, you've got flow in a, in a flume past this uh, circular body. And what happens is that the flow goes around it like this, um, but right behind it here, there's there are these uh, these circulation these cells where where fluid is circulating like that, um, and that's an eddy, uh, and that plays an important role in uh, the energy dissipation and also in mixing. Um, so if we're interested in chemical reactions, for example, uh, this can be an, an important thing. If we're interested in energy or drag, uh, the, this plays, a, plays an important role in, say, here, this example. Um, with a vehicle, there, there are eddies back here, and that plays a role in the, the drag on the, the vehicle. Um, this example shows a, a dune. Uh, so this is a pile of sand. Here's a, here's a big one uh, in a desert. And so the flow goes up and over this, and then there are, there, there's an eddy formed on the downside of this, uh, this dune. Uh, you guys know the, the dike out here right by Lake Hartwell? Um, so I used, to, I used to walk my dogs out there, so I was out there every day. And under some conditions, you have um, flow from the lake coming up 
and um, it, it, it's foggy, and the, so the fog is, is dense enough you can see what the flow is doing. And so the flow would come up over the, the dike and then separate, and you'd get, a, you'd get an eddy um, on, the, on the land side of the dike, just, just like what you're seeing here. Um, and so here's uh, some other examples. Uh, this one is, there's an island right here. And so this is a picture from a satellite. And uh, the atmosphere is flowing like this. And you have these eddies. There's one. And uh, there's one. And there's a whole series of eddies that are downstream in the wake of, of this island. Uh, this has, these kinds of eddies that are, um, that are forming from this object where the, the eddies are getting, sh are, are forming and getting shed and kind of getting uh, transmitted or flowed uh, downstream. These are called uh, von Karman vortices. Uh, and uh, they're, they're what, ha what cause a, a flag to flap in the breeze, for example. It goes back and forth as a result of these von Karman vortices. So these will, this, this happens uh, a lot, these uh, von Karman vortices, and that'll be one of the things we'll look at in, in one of the exercises that we'll do. OK, so we're interested in, um, in eddies, vortices forming. That'll be uh, an important aspect. We'll also be interested in, um, well, as it turns out, what's going to happen is these eddies will happen uh, over a wide range of scales. In some situations, you have flow like this, where you just have uh, laminar flow around a, uh, an object. And I I if you increase the velocity, then you start to get eddies forming back here. Um, but what also can happen is you can have uh, eddies forming just spontaneously within the fluid. Um, and this causes uh, a, a lot of energy dissipation. And, uh, and mixing. So it's important for the things that we're interested in. This is a process of, uh, of turbulence. And the, the turbulence is, can be somewhat, well, turbulence definitely involves formation of eddies. We can have some eddies, though, forming under lower flow or laminar conditions. Um, this will happen, for example, with these, uh, these eddies that form downstream from a from a circular object or from a from an immobile object, but a lot of times when eddies are forming, it'll be under turbulent conditions, uh, and this will involve uh, it, this will be a very important in mixing. So here's a a set of experiments that were done. This is uh, flow in a tube. So right there, that's that's the tube, um, and uh, the the flow was done with a, a system where you could inject a, a little um, a stream of dye. And so uh, this, is, this top one is flow under uh, fairly slow conditions under uh, laminar flow regime. Uh, and you can see that the, the dye comes out and just forms this uh, straight line uh, all the way down. And then a as, as you go down here, the velocity uh, increases. And so you, you see in this next one that there, there's a little bit of uh, perturbation just within the flow itself. Um, these are uh, these are formed by these uh, small eddies that are uh, that are causing a little bit of perturbation in the flow, and then you can see as we increase the velocity even more, uh, the perturbations uh, get to be larger. But you can still kind of follow the um, the the die trace. But then as you as you increase further, these uh, these eddies get to be. Um, more energetic, uh, more pervasive through the fluid, and uh, you get this uh, much, uh, much larger um, degree of mixing. So this transition from laminar to turbulent is going to be an important aspect uh, for fluid flow. Um, this happens as a result of increasing the velocity. It also uh, happens as a result of just increasing the length of the flow. and. Uh, this is, this is kind of a nice picture here of, um, uh, I don't know, you guys recognize him? Humphrey Bogart? So Humphrey Bogart with his uh, cigarette, which back in the day was, I guess, a cool thing to be doing. Uh, and he's got this rising plume, and we've got laminar flow right in here 
So it's behaving kind of like this. And then once you get in here, uh, you have it break up in, by these, uh, in these turbulent uh, eddies and, uh, and, and get dispersed. Okay, so that'll be also an important thing that we'll be looking at. What we'll do this week is just look at laminar flow, and then next week we'll, uh, we'll do turbulent effects.